Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. I hope everybody is keeping safe. So for, for anybody who is new to my channel, this is where we talk about anything AI. And uh, last two weeks have been really busy for me because we were launching the first cohort of the ML engineering program at Fourth Brain. I will put the link below. If anybody is interested in, in you know, joining us for our programs, we are launching international cohorts pretty soon. So stay tuned. Um, for today's uh, session, I have been getting uh, several requests based off of a video that I did a couple of weeks back on unboxing a system 76. So that's a pretty uh, not so much known uh, Linux computer, I would say. It has got very strong specs and um, I would say that the specs, uh, specs you know, bring it cheaper with respect to the other competitors like Dell and uh, all of the other you know, mobile workstations that are out there. Um, so I've been pretty happy working with the System76, uh, but I wanted to show you, and so this is an update video today. Uh, what I will be showing is uh, for two different algorithms, you know, one is using AlexNet and the other one is using TensorBoard, how I was able to make modifications in order to work TF2 and in, in order to, uh, you know, have the visualizations and, you know, work on huge data sets like 1.1 gigabytes. I was able to read them and be able to visualize them as well. Um, so if any of this is of interest to you, please like and subscribe to this channel. And if there is anything else that you would wa want me to cover, uh, you know, in, in the weeks to come, please do send me a, a message on LinkedIn or send me a comment below. So let's get straight to it. All right, so I am using the on my system 76. This is the software. It is uh, the operating system is Ubuntu 20.0. And uh, I wanted to show the how sleek uh, it actually looks. So you see, you have apps that launch. It's it's very similar to the Windows framework. And let's say I'm looking for a particular app, um, you know that, that it'll, it'll, it'll open up. So I really like the, this, uh, you know, format in which you know the, the apps launch up. So it gives a, it a pretty sleek uh, look, I believe. The other thing I like about it is the battery. The battery, I have run it without power um, and it stays on for about four or five hours, but probably not more. Um, but um, so far, it, it's a fast charge. So uh, I keep it hooked up and, uh, you know, I, I run my algorithms and I've had no issues so far. Right, so I wanted to go over some of the examples of deep learning and some of the workarounds that I've been, uh, you know, facing. So I am uh, actually, uh, I wanted to start by, by telling you that my computer actually has, uh, you know, CUDA, so I have GPU and I'm using GTX, uh, GeForce RTX 2070. So it's GeForce RTX 2070 uh, and it has eight gigabytes of, uh, you know, GPU. On the current system and uh, again I'll, I'll be mentioning this in the description box below and why i'm mentioning it is there are some issues running running uh uh you know tensorflow gpu on this particular uh you know, a GPU setup, and I found a, a lot of discussion in the um, in, in in the community as well. So because of which I've had to find a workaround. So for anybody who is having GE Force RTX 2070 on their computer, you might have to use the same workaround. It might not be a System 76. It could be, you know, any system that that is using this particular GPU setup, uh, especially for TensorFlow 2.0. So um, just wanted to give a heads up and uh, wanted to show you what I'm getting for AlexNet. So um, I wanted to show you this is this a particular code is for classification of, um, you know, AlexNet um, a model. And what I'm doing is input is, uh, you know, diabetic retinopathy images and the output is, um, you know, it, it's the how severe is each and every image. So that's the simple job that I'm trying to do. What I will show you is this cell number two, this is extremely important for your code to run on TF 2.0. If this is not there, then, uh, you know, I, I'll show you that my CUDNN is having an issue and the GPU does not even initialize. So I'll show you what the issue that I'm having and then I'll show you how to work around it. All right. So let's get started. So this is just the first cell. Like I said, cell number two, I'm not going to run it right now. 
Uh, two classes I want to make right now is just, you know, zero versus non-zero. So it's a binary classification problem. Um, the model that I'm in, in importing is standard AlexNet. So the in, in images are 227 by 227 by 3, so RGB images. And um, epochs, I, I just have, you know, selected some values. Now the data, uh, I've already stored the data as HDF5 format. And I'm just reading from there. And I'm randomly picking 796 images to train and 390 images. Images, uh, for testing and uh, because it's TF 2.0 uh, Keras is already a, a part of it so you know I just do model summary and I'm able to see the the, the model summary and uh, then I just uh, you know invoke and just uh, here in this case I'm actually doing data augmentation now data augmentation is super important um, in, in any sort of deep learning uh, using images uh, application what it does is it, it takes random values of the parameters that you've passed and picks an image so in this case I've given it a batch size of five and it's just augmenting or, or generating a modified version of the same image so modifications what I've allowed is a rescaling of the pixel one to 255 uh, rotation range is about 10 uh, and width height and, and zoom shifts that, that, that I have allowed so what it does is it for each and every one of these values it just randomly picks a, a, assigns a value and it, it picks an image and assigns those values to that particular image so ideally if you have a, a let's say a set of 10 images you can have infinite ways of, of actually you know I wouldn't say infinite but you can have a lot of number of ways of modifying the the image sets um, so that's why you need to actually put a break here so that you know if you want to stop after a certain number of uh, epochs in this case so this is just you know the, the general idea of uh, image augmentation so what i do after that is uh, you know i just uh, try to uh, train the, the the model and this is where you will see that it says train function error and if i go back um, to the terminal, you will see that it says could not create CUDN and handle internal error. And this is the issue that comes with this GTX uh, 2070. Now, let me close this uh, and, and, and show you what will happen if I had run that cell number two so that everything would work seamlessly. So for this version, we are going to be doing the exact same thing, but now I will be running this, uh, you know, cell number two. And for anyone, if uh, you are having the same issue, I am going to be, uh, you know, putting the my um, the, the version of, of my NVIDIA GPU as well as this uh, code, uh, you know, in the description box below so that if anybody needs help working around it, you should be able to now implement it. And again, this is already there uh, in the community. I just had to find it. I had to do a lot of research to find this workaround solution and so i'm hoping this is going to help uh, any of my my listeners uh, in their coding uh, expertise um, so again i did my image data generator augmenter and now i am just uh, you know training the algorithm this is exactly where it stopped before now you see it is running and even if i go back uh, you see now it is successfully opened and now it is able to uh, you know run the code so again, a pretty simple uh, fix was able to run this AlexNet for me. Again, it's just epochs, it'll, it'll, it'll keep on going. So another application that I wanted to actually show you, uh, this is in, in data science. And what I wanted to show you is how my computer, uh, I'm actually able to deal with large data sets uh, in this case. So this uh, work actually corresponds to a very recent publication that I have. And again, I will be linking um, the, this paper in the, in the description box below, but it's categorizing online shopping behavior from cosmetics to electronics and analytical framework. And I, I, I could, uh, if, if you would really like me I can cover this uh, paper on you know some other day today what I wanted to show you is for this particular paper um, we were actually working on a very large data set so I just wanted to show you the size of the data set um, you said that the process data set was about a 1.1 gigabyte so that's you know several millions of, of records that, that we already have and uh, the, the goal that I'm trying to do here is is you know read this particular data set and generate a visualization of the clustering uh, 
behavior of uh, you know and the clusters here corresponding to uh, customer behaviors here what i wanted to show you here was how i am visualizing uh you know such a large data set uh, on my computer using tensorboard so let me show you uh, the, the steps that I'm actually working on in here. In this case, I'm just creating a, a directory to store, uh, you know, all the all the tensor board whenever uh, I need to store the logs. That's all I did initially. And now I'm reading that 1.1 gigabyte of data. Um, and again, of course, it, it takes a little bit of time. You can hear probably the, the computer <laughs> uh, heat it up whenever I did that and it's 10 million records um, that, that I have access to, all right? And uh, what, what I got to do, and again, they have, you know, 38 uh, features. And again, uh, if you go to the paper, it'll, it'll explain um, the, the steps of, of getting each and every, uh, you know, feature. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is, again, uh, I, in, in this case, I can either go by and reduce the dimensionality. Again, if you have such a high dimensional data, um, I'm actually using PCA. And uh, I just shrunk uh, it from 38 components to, um, you know, five components in, in this case. Because again, if you do TensorBoard, you're probably not going to be able to see more than three dimensions anyway. So having the five closest dimensions is uh, not, uh, you know, a, a bad choice. So I'm going to be applying uh, embedding. Uh, using a, a particular version. Now I'm actually using TF 2.0 and uh, I can tell you that it was really hard for me to get the, the code to, to run TensorBoard on TF 2.0. So if anybody is looking for the code, please, uh, you know, leave me a comment and I'll be happy to make this uh, code uh, visible and available uh, because I had a hard time, uh, you know, porting all of my Tensor, TensorBoard visualization from TensorFlow 1 to TensorFlow 2, okay? So um, if, you, if you want, let me know and I can help you with that. Okay, so finally, I wanted to share what the visualization of this data in TensorBoard looks like, right? So I, uh, I just, you know, ran the embedding and here I just uh, gave it the command uh, in order to launch the TensorBoard. And you see, uh, it's, it's now launched at, at localhost. So I will open a new tab and let me just refresh it once and that's pretty much it and this is what the data looks like but as soon as i uh, run the tsne um, now you will see that uh, you know i i find a good shape and structure uh, to the data and we are now able to get clusters and these clusters uh, we've been able to define in the paper so um, what i wanted to show is uh, it's pretty powerful machine where I can, you know, upload, you know, up over uh, over 10 million records. Of course, I did some stratified sampling for this particular uh, data set because in TensorBoard, you won't see more than 100,000 samples anyways. So I, I was I had to do some amount of stratified sampling, uh, but still uh, it can still, uh, you know, go through, you know, uh, millions of, of records pretty fast. All right. And uh, what I do like it as, as uh, at times, I like to pause it and uh, look at it with color map. So these are the, the, the different labels. So there are five different colors of, of labels. Of course, you can't see it yet. I just give it some perturbation. And if I resume, um, so of course, you see most red labels and the red is the cluster zero. But there are other clusters in there as well. So um, this is the TSNE manifold space is actually helping us um, look at um, how the, the clustering of uh, customers has happened in, the, in, in this particular uh, space, subspace. So again, if I pause it and now you'll be able to see, see all the other colors. So this is not just red, but all the other color customers are actually in here. So you see the blue and the green dots. So this is how, you know, the, the distribution of, of customers in, in, in the space has happened. So now, although, it, you know, if, if you just look at it at the, at the PCA, you won't actually be able to see um, clustering uh, as much. But in the TSNE space, uh, now you're able to see patterns, visualize and understand, um, you know, why uh, customer behavior is, is different. 
so that these are the two examples um you know that i've tried out uh, of deep learning and uh, visualization on my system please leave me a comment as to which one you like better and if you'd like me to cover a code in in detail on on any particular algorithm so uh, next week onwards i will be covering some of the accepted papers so this year i have uh, five publications and four accepted papers next week onwards i'll start covering some of the uh, you know very recent accepted papers that i have um, so that if you see some interesting ideas come out of that uh, at all or not um, so that's all for today thank you